you're cramping up. Uh, let's see if we can get out of this. <laughs> it appears Geraldo is in deep doo-doo. Hold on. Let's, oh, man. Hey. The current is too strong, I guess. Well, here I'm sitting. Can I? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh man. <laughs> Jesus. All right, let's get out of this. This. Hold on. Okay, this. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what to say. At least I have all my stuff. I kind of thought that would happen, so I was, I was balancing on that one. One waterfall up, and I put my cane down there, because I figured, okay, if you fall, you don't want to be stabbed by your cane. Okay, and that's what ended up happening. And you see, wow. Where I fell in, it was kind of deep. But then you hit bumping into these rocks, and then the current just keep pushing you down. But yeah. Oh, look at this. Is it grasshoppers? Yep. Oh man. My phone. My gongo. <laughs> I have an incredible day planned for you guys. In retrospect, that was kind of fun. I'd like to do that again without my phone and all my stuff. But I'm kind of in it now. Ah. All right. Only thing that matters is my did my phone survive. Oh man, I'm gonna have to swim again. But here, ah, oh, here the current is not. Hold on. Uh. 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 Woo. Why am I cramping up? Oh, my feet, my legs. All right, let me just gather my stuff. Uh. 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 As you can imagine, that was pretty cold. Let me fix some things and dry up. But we'll start again. I don't know how I'm going to get back to where I came from. Because the current is too strong. Alright, let me put my camera down so that doesn't happen again. I was lucky, I kid you not. It doesn't look like much, but that current is strong when you're in it.
It's okay. <laughs> I can't believe it works. Look at that. Okay, let me dry up and fix a couple of things. Only thing that matters is that my phone is okay. Well, let's do that again then. Not exactly the intro I had planned, but at least I discovered that I swim fairly well with all my clothes on. So, this is the River Canyon, the Tongue River Canyon in the state of Wyoming. And you can trek along this river up the mountains here for many, many miles. How many miles? I don't know. I guess that is what I'm here to investigate for this special episode of Herald Investigates, America's least populated state. This is uh, in the north of Wyoming and we're not gonna see anyone else on this trek or hike here today for the simple reason that there are only 580,000 people who live in this entire state. So if anything happens today, yeah, I'm pretty much screwed. So if I do get attacked by a rattlesnake or if anything happened, my plan is just to float in the river and try to make it back to a town called Dayton where the, yeah, which will be the, the closest sign of civilization as fast as humanly possible. But you know, fingers crossed that nothing will happen. Yet I, I have done about two miles of this hike before, but the plan is to just continue further up the mountain and see how far I can get. And I brought plenty of supplies today. I brought uh, Powerade, I brought water. And anyway, I'm along this river. So if at any stage I run out of beverages, even the entertaining one, you know, uh, I'll show you. Uh, water isn't the only beverage I brought on this hike. You know, then I can, uh, then I can drink the river water. Hey, what are you guys doing here? Wanna tag along? Out of all the hikes I've done in my life, I think this is the most scenic one. Because for the first two miles, you're walking along this river with unrivaled scenic so these lands you see here was the last place in America that the Indian tribes lived their traditional lifestyle of hunting and living in nature before they were forced to settle on the reservations now how, did, how all that came about, of course, is a long story, but one of the flashpoints, one of the, uh, the um, points of, of conflict, other than the fact that, well, you know, people don't generally like when other people muscle in on their territory. So Whitey came up here on his way through Oregon because the Oregon farmland was apparently amazing, hence the Oregon Trail went through here. And um, gold was found in California, so then the California Trail also went through here. So no one really settled here until there had been a couple of cattle drives from Texas up to the, the gold mines of Montana, which is north of here. And a lot of those ranchers discovered that, hmm, uh, why don't we just have our cattle graze here in, in Wyoming? Instead of, uh, instead of bringing them all the way from Texas up to Montana, that's quite a hike. Also, the railway was built, and eventually people started settling here. Sheep farmers moved in and trappers were here. I guess those were the first, even before the ranchers and the, uh, the sheep farmers, they loved to hunt bison. And the only thing that the bison was used for by these uh, newcomers was 
for the tongue. Impressive, right? The bison tongue apparently is a delicacy. And for the hide, the fur. After the bison was skinned and the tongue was cut off, it was just left to rot. And apparently, the bison was hunted so much that it nearly went extinct. Now, the bison was the staple of the Indian economy up here. So, apart from the fact that these newcomers came here, settled here, uh, started farming, and, 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 you know, who are you? You know, we control these lands. They were actually destroying the basis of the Indian economy. So, obviously, this was gonna this was gonna blow up into conflict at some stage, and it did. So, a number of wars were fought up here. Even one here in the, in the Tong River, not in the Tong River Canyon, but there was a war here called the Tong River Conflict. Uh, look it up, there's a little, little article about it in Wikipedia. And, uh, you know, at a, over, over a couple of decades, eventually, the Indian tribes were subdued, defeated, and were forced to go um, and live in these undesirable, undesirable lands that were called reservations. If anyone, if we have any amateur historians in the comment section who want to elaborate on this story, because this is not my realm or field at all, but I'm very interested in, uh, in the history here of these lands, feel free to, to enlighten us in the comment section. Ooh. Yep. There's been some snake crawling through here. Another interesting fact about Wyoming and hence these lands you see me wander through here was that they became part of the United States in 1803 when Thomas Jefferson, then the incumbent president, completed the Louisiana Purchase from a cash-strapped, war-weary Napoleon who'd not long before come to power in France. So although Wyoming is located in the north of the country far away from where the French had set up shop in Louisiana, the French still laid claim to the lands up here despite having no settlements in the region or having even explored this part of the country at that time. Getting up there. Here you can see the mountains I'm eventually going to scale. So as far as basically I have any strength or power left. Nope, didn't forget you, but I did forget to mention that once the bison was hunted to near extinction, of course, the fields were, were free for all the cows and sheep of the settlers to, to come and graze. So that may never have happened then, unless the bison had first been hunted to near extinction. By the way, so here you see, this is either from a lightning strike this happens a lot up here. You see these trees that are burnt. And of course, when the lightning strikes a tree like this, it's toast. It's over. It dies. But here you see so many trees like this. So it's likely that there's been a fire. Here we go. See, all of these trees are burnt. So, who knows? Maybe a lightning strike started the fire. And... You know, a lot of these trees went under where it was man who decided to barbecue a pork chop who set this off. Who knows? It's been uphill for a couple of kilometers now. I'm contemplating jumping back into the river. But I have so far to go that 
I just want to kind of see how deep in I can go before I waste any more time. Ooh. Oh man, look at this. Doesn't that look absolutely fantastic and awesome? Okay, it may be time for a side quest. We'll see as I come, as I go closer. It is side quest o'clock. I made an executive decision. I've been going uphill now for quite a while. Come out here on, onto this open plain. Those are the mountains I'm eventually gonna wander up through, but look up there on that ridge that I have dubbed Fireball Mountain. Or that one, either one. But I conjecture if you it may be too steep once you get up there, but you don't know before you're there. So, it also seems, I haven't really been worried about the rattlesnakes until now, but up there, uh, yeah. All right, wish me luck. Now this is gonna take a long time. From down there, Fireball Mountain, is that what I named it? Just looks like a little peak, but no. It's probably a kilometer or something up there. And like this is taking some time. So mainly because I'm watching my every step because of rattlesnakes. Now, it's not that rattlesnakes are particularly vicious snakes, but I mean, they are a member of the viper family and they're highly deadly. There's something like, I looked it up, like 5,000 bites or something a year. And they love to hide either under rocks or on rocks. So, and obviously also they don't like people. So rattlesnakes will, will hang out on paths where, where people don't really go. And in case you haven't noticed, this is the kind of, of, um, of, well, there's not a trail, but it's the kind of path that only I'm dumb enough to basically walk on. So, uh, yeah, at least we have this, this stick. Not sure it helps much, but okay, less babbling, more scaling Fireball Mountain. Jesus. We just need to get over this vegetation. And it looks to be more hilly and rocky and less, less plants. Maybe I chose the wrong path. Well, hold on, there is no path. This is steeper than the Sedona hike, let me tell you that. But boy, is it worth it. Even already here, just looking at. I came up to a, a nice little rattlesnake cave. If you're wondering what rattlesnakes do during the winter, because here there will be snow. They live in caves or ravines, up to a thousand rattlesnakes can live in one little uh, cave like this. And yeah, they enter like a semi-stage of hibernation. Not too dissimilar to bears, but I'm not sure if they actually sleep. I think they just lower their metabolism and chill. Now, they might also be here now during summer because they love to hide under rocks or on top of rocks. For the heat, of course, they are cold-blooded. So, meaning ra rattlesnake or any snake will be whatever. <laughs> I still have to kind of look where I set my, you know, plant my feet here. Uh, so any 
snake of course is cold-blooded meaning they are the same temperature as the climate around them humans of course we don't roll like that if it is cold if it is hot we like to maintain what is it 38 degrees okay I'll be honest I was about to abort right down halfway up there but no Geraldo never aborts anything. Off with the sunglasses because I can see better. I have to scan basically every square inch that I'm going to set my foot on. So here, you know, these little creeks, these little cracks, this bushland right here, this is where they live. I'll tell you another interesting fact about the rattlesnake is that they give birth to not eggs, but one of the snakes that give birth to have eggs inside their body, but they give birth to live rattlesnakes. And I think something like only 20% of them see the past their their first birthday Ooh. but what's interesting is that the the mama rattlesnake will actually spend time a couple of weeks with her babies lest they fall prey to to birds and the animals that eat hopefully it'll be easier here we're almost there just need to get past this i kind of regret my decision to walk right here. I knew that these rocks kind of is where they where they chill and hide, but I didn't know how juicy those rocks were before I walked past them. Anyway, we're getting up there. Looking forward to that fireball if I can find one up there. Now this is very time consuming and the main reason for that is of course that you like to step on these rocks because whenever you step outside of these rocks you slide I'm just spending a lot of time making my way up here but at least now the grass is not as tall as it was before so you know I use my stick I be loud and hopefully they either hiss rattle or I see them before they see me I wouldn't mind seeing one. I'd love to. I mean, all these hikes you've seen me do, I haven't seen a single snake. The only problem, I just don't want to be bitten by one. Oh wow. Unreal. Getting there. Okay, I'll feel better now. I can see there's no easier path than what I've done. I've just walked straight up. That's where we're going. Now, not quite sure how I'm gonna go down here, but I will. Windy up here. Another tree, possibly struck by lightning or fire. wasn't for this cane. Oh, so this one happens, you see here? I was on my way down there. 
how far. Well, there's no telling. But this is what I'm stepping on, so... You know, I don't know if I said it before, but without this cane, this wouldn't have been possible. Okay. We're gonna make our way around that bend and then continue up. Oh, oh man. So let me just tell you, going sideways, or whenever I have to move down a little bit, is much, much harder than, whew, than, than going up. So, I've already up here, you see things you can't see from down there. So my plan was to walk around here, but the rocks there are too tall. So I'm gonna attempt up here and hopefully there's a path to the right around that one and up there less vlogging more surviving oh man oh, but what a view whenever you feel dejected you're like oh man you turn around you're like wow you're gonna be all smiles you still hear the river and see it down there. <sighs> Windy. What I'm hoping is that there's a path around here. Yep, it's been a massive fire up here at some stage, but that seems to have cleared a path for Geraldo. That's also very windy up here because I'm not protected by the canyon, like down there, so. But let's, let's continue. Let's see how much further when I'm, when I'm up there, how much further to go. Not a close call, so I mean, Jesus Christ. Oh. Oh. Thank God I didn't lose that. I wouldn't have been able to come down. Let's use this. I guess there's a reason why that handle is, why that string is there. little 
a break. <sighs> yep, they like to chill under things like that. So I'm not gonna step on anything like that. Does it ever get easier up here? Oh man, this is even steeper than down there. I was kind of hoping I was going to catch my second wind up here. Doesn't look like I am. One of these just could take me all the way up there. This one's a little too thin to balance on. Yeah, Bear Belly Geraldo doesn't fancy his chances on that one. Gotta hold on to your hat here. Oh wow, we're not even close. That is where we're going. Will we get there before nightfall? I don't know. We'll try. step a little bit here because the wind is so strong. Let's continue. I hear hissing. I don't know what it is. It's the wind or not, but you hear hissing, you turn around. Yeah, this is just a perfect, perfect little rattle cave. Not cave, but this is where they like to live. And that's hence not where I like to walk. Let's go back away from these rocks. This right here is the type of terrain that you slip on. It's incredibly difficult to hike here. Much more so than you can see in a camera. That's why I was aiming for this tree, but it's actually too steep despite my third arm here. So I have to walk around. But each time you kind of try to, you fall. Or you slip, you start sliding. I just want to get up there. 10 more meters. It looks easier, but who knows? 
I've thought that out so many times on this hike. This rock is also the perfect kind of nest. No, seems clear before I put my hand up there. Yep, don't see anything. Nothing, nothing to hold on to. <laughs> I don't think I've been so glad to see a tree in a while. So it would be easier if I wasn't filming. And trying not to lose my hat. Less hiking, more surviving. We're getting there. Just a penultimate peak. Look at this. <laughs> Let me catch my breath. It's well worth it. I just have to catch my breath before I make a run at Fireball Peak. What a view. I think it's time. Let's make a move. You gotta watch where you... Ooh. I was gonna sit there, but you know, just what happens if you sit there. Ooh. Tough drop. I'm not sure even Geraldo would survive that. What about these ones? Sturdier. Okay. I think it's time. Oh yes, it is gonna go o'clock. And I know what you guys are gonna say, you party poopers. You're gonna be like, Geraldo, gongo, it's not allowed. 
Congo is illegal, it's moonshine. Uh, well, for your information, in the state of Wyoming, Congo is very legal. And if you doubt that, it even says yes, yes. Very illegal underneath. So, Raldo is going to enjoy his Congo. It's actually glass, a so good thing it didn't break. At my little, you know, unplanned excursion in the water. All right. Maybe this is the thumbnail, just me with Gongo on the mountaintop. Oh, Gongo rarely tasted so well. It's always a treat, but I mean, this was... Ah. Probably the most scenic Gongo location in the world. Well... We'll see, it might be even more scenic up on Fireball Mountain. But you can't drink Gongo on Fireball Mountain. Only Fireball's allowed up there. Ah, oh. hold on, maybe I should have my hat on for a thumbnail. It doesn't seem to be as windy, so all right. It is thumbnail and gongo o'clock. Uh oh, it starts to blow. <sighs> gongo, the spice of life. getting there. There it is. Or so I hope. Each time I've thought that, you know, I've, I've been looking up at another, at another mountain, or another huge rock. And each time I have gone around said rock, it's been more difficult. The hike doesn't get easier. It gets tougher and tougher the further up I go.
さほう Please be the last one Yep He certainly Get a lot of scratches. Sa. I think this is it, even though here I see another peak right there. I don't think I could see that from underneath. I think this is Fireball Peak. All right, so you think you're gonna hold on to a tree? You basically, oh, you, yeah. Okay, don't, don't trust in dead trees. Huh. Yeah, this is it, this is it. Ah. 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 Hey, I come in peace. These are the ones you have to look out for. They like to chill in these. Yep, I made it. <laughs> Whoa, Whew. took me almost. Two and a half hours. Oh. Yep. This is it. Oh man. That parrot just won't leave me alone. Damn you, parrot! Do you work for the Red Ant Commander? Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so you can actually, yeah, you can go further up as well. But this is Fireball Peak. This is what we saw from, from down below. Ooh. The landscape up here is unreal. And of course, very slippery. Ah. Don't worry, there's no one else walking on this mountain. I checked. You're not gonna attack me, are you? <laughs> I'm a little worried. I'm looking out for a rattlesnake from below, trying to keep my balance, not lose my hat, and Try and avoid being being kamikaze by a by a, a kamikaze parrot. It's actually the first kamikaze parrot I've ever run into, so I'm not quite sure how to behave around them. Anyway, let's get my fireball ready, and then I'll tell you how these canyons are formed. Trying, trying not to lose my hat whilst unscrewing my fireball and balancing on this clip and looking out for the kamikaze parrot which is still circling me from above. Anyway, 
I think I know how to do it. As soon as I kind of look up, my hat flies off. We're gonna have to put the hat down. And just let the fro be whatever the fro is after having tre trekked up this mountain. So anyway, cheers to you guys. And since I'm probably the first one dumb enough to scale this mountain, I dub the Fireball Peak. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ah. All right, now we can put the hat back on. So, So how are these canyons formed? Well, they are cut mainly by rivers, also wind, and uh, which erodes the landscape and, and kind of wears it down. But this mainly Tongue uh, River Canyon right here has been cut by Tongue River. And it, it starts up there in the, uh, I mean, the, I think this is part, technically part of the Rocky Mountains. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the Rocky Mountains stretch all the way from up in Canada through Wyoming, Colorado, Montana, all the way down to, to uh, is there Arizona? But this, this, ri this river cuts into the sediment, the stone, and carries the material at the bottom of the river further down, and it keeps eroding the riverbed. So the same thing happen is happening, for example, in the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon erodes at the speed of, uh, at the depth of one foot every 200 meters. I think it's time. You know what, why not? It's kind of gonna conserve my gongo supplies, but seeing as it is very legal, you know, I think I should indulge. Yes, yes. And we begin the hike down. I can't say that I'm particularly looking forward to this because, well, even though it's a bit cloudy now, you know, just like it was earlier in the morning, uh, generally this is when the, the, uh, the rattlesnakes come out to, to heat up and bask in the glory of the sun. So, yeah, what I try to do is, you know, be loud, throw, you know, push a lot of stones ahead of me. So. Usually, if there's someone out there in front of me, he'll he'll move away, because he's more afraid of Geraldo than Geraldo is of him. But it is, it is steep, and these trees offer absolutely no support. I mean, you grab onto the tree. I think wasn't that the tree that tipped over? Uh, so yeah. All right. See you when I'm further down. Ooh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. If you're wondering, I haven't seen a soul all day, so it's pretty much something happens here. I actually had cell service on top there, but uh, down here on this climb or in the, in the canyon, I haven't had cell service all day, so it's pretty much game over if something happens. Have we gone 10 meters? This is gonna be fun.
This is how we do it. This is how we do it. Not sure I like that bush, but I'm kind of on this tree now. is basically straight down here and I know it doesn't look like that in the camera said it a million times before but it is pretty much straight down and without this cane I'll be screwed I just saw my first snake he was gray as I put this right here he just crawled away now, it's a very little snake, tiny. Basically like, like this branch right here. He slid it away and it was not a, uh, was not a rattle. But it just means that they are out there. So I'm just gonna keep putting my, my stick in front, you know, push a lot of stones and rocks down before me and then I should be okay. Funny thing is, if I had really been looking for snakes, which I am, I wouldn't have seen him. So again, goes to show, snakes are more afraid of, uh, of you than you are of them. And if you are careful, you should be able to avoid them. This is fun. So I just walked from down this one and I stood here thinking, hmm, I will investigate. I do that sometimes off camera too. And I wonder if you step on a couple of them, just like keep swinging, well, they all kind of keep sliding. And look at this. Uh, they do. <laughs> so I'm not gonna tempt faith any further by actually sliding down with it. Whilst not the easiest or safest because they slide and they crack and they break it is definitely the fastest so as long as you kind of concentrate you can indeed balance on these things but yeah still looks very slow but it's it's then again it is faster than than uh, then walking around and underneath them and also underneath them you have snakes so I'm trying to stay on top of these for as much as I can ooh, ooh. don't worry these are just crickets Okay, I'm not stepping on that. That was indeed a plan before I kicked it. Oh man, don't like this high grass. What about this one? This one seems better. Now, of course, there's one thing I can't control. 
if they decide to just have a fireball tree avalanche down here now, there's not much I can do about that. But, fingers crossed, that doesn't happen. Another problem, you see here, because it's charred, you step on it, you can kind of, this tree, you can't really walk on that, you just start sliding. So I'm gonna have to step over this one. I'm not liking this, the vegetation here. It's kind of lovely rattle territory. You know what? It took me almost three hours to get up. It's not taking me any less to go down. Just can't move fast in this type of terrain. You see? Let's move over there. I'd say this is the steepest part, right below the trees. Now I'm gonna turn a right and then we have that huge hill, which is probably still gonna take me an hour to go down, maybe more. But at least there the grass isn't ridiculous, so you know you could you could see what's ahead. Whew, whew. <laughs> Don't worry, it happens a hundred times. As soon as I turn off the camera, it happens just as often. That's what it's like walking in hills. You slip, you slide. But hopefully you will survive. Just as I said you survive, <laughs> I slipped. <laughs> but I, I literally pressed the off button as I said survive. Anyway, I didn't slide very far. As you can see, these are the, this is what the last thing I was filming, so. Okay, but like I said, you slip, you slide, you survive. <sighs> yep, we're getting there. Not looking forward to this, because now I can see this is indeed even steeper than what I just scaled. But okay, put the camera in the bag, I think. And I'm going to be scanning for my life for uh, rattles. And also I'm going to try not to slide. Let me tell you, coming down is a bitch. Let me just say, if you thought walking up was rough, walking down... I mean, if you walk on the, on the high grass, you can't really see what goes on in front of you, and you slip and slide. You walk here, on these rocks, well, you set your foot anywhere, and the whole, like this, everything just starts sliding. And, obviously, hurts your foot when you when you step on that and your ankle has rocks are smashing into it and all that but anyway I reckon I'll be down there in I thought this would be like a two-hour adventure keep in mind that's not fireball hill that's behind there again uh, but yeah coming up on four more than four hours we'll see when I'm down there Whew. but I'm gonna soldier on uh oh my camera don't roll my no. I did it! I can't believe I did that. There we go. Fireball peak. 
Jesus. Yep. Oh. Oh man. I'm so glad I did that. You know, I almost gave up, but you know, giving in is not in my vocabulary. Am I signing off? Quite possibly. So, from the foot of Fireball Peak, Geraldo is signing off. Just for the record here, that to the left is not Fireball Peak, neither is the one in the middle, it's the one to the right which from here at least looks like the highest point. I think one and two over, that would be um, Kamikaze Parrot Peak. Dangerous up there. I am back in the river where it all began. I'm not quite sure how to end this vlog. I've tried a couple of times, but you know, I had so much fun from the disastrous beginning to the incredible hike up to, what did I name it again? Fireball Peak. I mean, it's, it's been a crazy day, so I figured I'll go back in the water, but without all my gear. Uh, so, uh, to end this vlog. So, from the Tongue River Canyon, Geraldo, who is mucho, mucho tired, my my feet are in pain because I don't wear hiking shoes, but that's another story. And I'm just exhausted. I think I'm going to go... Well, the trail ends here, and I'm going to have to walk on the road and hitchhike my way back to Dayton. And, yeah, I'm going to go to a Kidoba there, if they have one. Or a McDonald's. Anyway, I need sustenance. Oh, I'm at the end of the whatever you call it here, and... Oh, so this will be the end of the vlog, but I probably have another two, three miles to walk. So, wish me luck. And, uh, signing off! Greetings from Geraldo, who just made his way up to Fireball Mountain, as you can see, it's quite the feat coming up here. It took me three hours actually, and uh, I just celebrated scaling this mountain top with a fireball. And seeing as I'm out of fireball, and I'm still thirsty. Good thing that I still have my my gongo supplies handy. So I think we're gonna go on here, show you guys the, the view in the other direction, and then have a celebratory. Sip Ogongo, Tanzania's finest. And if you're watching this, my friend Faki Party, the sip is for you. Cheers. Now begins the journey down. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do that because it was so steep going up that I had to use a walking cane. So that's right. Some of you might say, hey, hey, but Geraldo, you're so old, you probably use a cane anyway. Okay, maybe I do, maybe I don't. But on this hike, up through this territory, with rattlesnake lurching in the bushes, and up through this burnt forest, you can see the forest just been on fire, because this is how they make fireball. I can assure you, even you would need a cane. So, it is signing off to Geraldo, and, uh, Let's hope I survival the climb Bodano. I guess I'm still here. I just love this river so much. I think I'm just gonna chill and sleep here until it gets dark. And then I'll walk out of this mountain range and get cell service. I don't know what I'm gonna do with cell service, though there's no Uber or anything up here. Uh, Eventually I'll find someone to hitch a ride with. Until then, it is nap o'clock.